Welcome back, everybody. My name is Mark. This is Open Air Outdoors. And uh, today is a shop project. And the project is building a double canoe rack to go on my existing uh, roof rack that's on my truck. So for those odd occasions, I may have a, a partner with me and two canoes. We can, uh, I can put both canoes in, uh, on the same truck and save ourselves some time and energy when we hit the back country. So first off, let's get a few things together, coffee, book, pen or pencil, We've got to write down our measurements, we're going to do some layout, and I uh, need some stuff for that. So here we are, we're going to climb up on the truck bed, and you can see the roof rack up there, I'm going to go get set up, and take an initial look, and uh, kind of figure out how I'm going to do this. Uh, my initial thoughts were to uh, do two members going uh, perpendicular to the original rack. So I'm, this is going to be done with 2 by 4 lumber. I'm not going to go elaborate. It just has to be functional and uh, safe, of course. So you'll see as we get along here with the video how things are going to turn out. So initially, let's get some measurements going on here. So I'm going to measure across because I have to make my crossers long enough for two canoes, but I have to shim it up. So I want to build a rack that's going to fit kind of like inside the original rack, if that makes any sense. Well, it will make sense as we get closer uh, into the build. So, of course, more measurements. Always more measurements. Okay, let's, uh, let's stop it here and move forward a little bit fast forward okay a quick trip to the lumber yard and back again with my uh, layout figured out that I need three two by fours eight feet long so let's just get this off the truck I'm just gonna throw them in the garage for now as we get reorganized with a few tools and we're gonna start chopping away all right, let's uh, let's do that next. Okay, this is day two. Rained overnight. You can see the asphalt is all wet, but the day is going to clear up. Be a nice day. So I got my saw horses out. I got my first piece of lumber out. This guy's going to get cut right half in two. That's going to transfer a little bit of layout over here. And I got my circular saw in the back there on the tailgate. I'm using the tailgate as a workbench, so to speak. Boom. And it's on. Okay, let's move over to the uh, next step of the process. Okay, and now I'm breaking out some uh, sliding... C clamp vice grips. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to clamp both my 2x4 members together because they will have uh, grooves cut into them and they're both going to be identical. So we'll uh, kind of kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. That way I can transfer all my measurements, two pieces all at the same time. So let's uh, now it's time to do some layout since I figure out where the hell I am here. There's my small square. And I go upstairs and do one final quick check. And I'm happy with what I found and what I got. So I'm going to transfer my measurements over. Okay, so now I am adjusting the depth of my blade right now. I'm looking for a quarter inch in depth uh, for the grooves that I'm going to be cutting into these 2x4s. And these grooves are for the 2x4s to sit. I want them to sit naturally into the crossbar of the existing rack on the truck. So once I got my measurements figured out on my saw, we're going to chop away. So let's jump right into that. All right, first order of business, hearing protection. I was already uh, tested to have 10% hearing loss in both ears 20 years ago. So I always wear hearing protection. 
whenever I'm messing around with any kind of noisy power tools or air tools or anything like that. So you see here I'm uh, putting in a couple of slices into my 2x4s that are uh, clamped together. Now I'm going to run right quick once I've done the two outer edges and do a series of cuts. And that's just to uh, remove the bulk of the material. I'm going to complete this and then I'm going to go over to the opposite end where my layout is already done. And then duplicate what you see here on the other side. So now using a simple claw hammer and just uh, beating out the little uh, pieces of wood. Getting the bulk of the material out of the way. And then you see in my hand that I'm holding a chisel. Once I'm done uh, smashing out the bigger pieces, then I'm going to run my chisel across the surface. And just clean up some more. Let's jump right into that right now. Okay, I'm going to finish up here with a block plane. I'm going to smoothen things out. I'm actually not going to be too particular about this. I mean, it's not a piece of furniture. I'm just going to smoothen that out. And of course, everything that you see going on here is duplicated on the other side. Okay, let's, uh, let me bring you in for a closer look so you can see exactly what it is that I created here. So the width that you see of these notches into these 2x4s, that is a little bit generous to the width of the crossbars on the original truck rack. Alright, so let's go see how this thing fits together. So here I have my two remaining 2x4s, 8 feet long, and I chose to go with a total width or length, I'm not sure how you would put that, but 6.5 feet is the number I, was in, I went for. That's the total width sitting on the rack. Now I went a little bit wider because, well, if it's too wide, I could always trim the ends down. I always cut it shorter, can't cut it longer. Here you'll see, you're starting to get an idea of what I was shooting for for a rack. There's that first member going across. And take a quick measurement, center that up. Just like that. Doesn't look too bad so far. Still got a little ways to go. More measurements. I brought everything within the eighth of an inch. I felt that was uh, precise enough for this type of project. Okay, it's time to uh, start securing pieces together. And what I'm using is a number eight uh, stainless steel screws. There it is. Uh, no particular reason why it's stainless steel is just uh, leftover hardware from a previous uh, past project, right? Didn't have to go out and buy whatever. I just used, utilizing what I have at hand. The length was just correct. And one last little look. 
and drive some screws home. Just like that, keeping a close eye on everything, make sure nothing shifts as I'm driving in the screws. And I still have the front one to do yet. Okay, let's go for a little walk. I'm going to take you guys up top here, give you a, a closer look at what exactly it is I'm creating. There's four screws on each end is what I'm doing. So that's the rear member in position, everything looking good. Okay, now to position the front one. Duplicate my measurements, obviously. No biggie here. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'm lining everything up so that uh, my crossers are lined up perfectly with the crossers on the original truck rack. Now I'm giving you a little bit of a different perspective on what I'm doing. Uh, you'll notice the notching I cut with the saw. See how it uh, cradles around that crossbar? That's what I was aiming for. So now I'm screwing in uh, the front member. Make sure everything is secure. Now if you look at uh, the alignment of the 2x4 with the crossbar, if you can imagine once the canoe is thrown on there, the strap that will strap the canoe onto that rack can be wrapped completely around both pieces which in turn will connect the new rack to the old rack and will secure it together even more. And here's the other side, just a duplicate of what's going on. And a view from the top. And here I got the strap. I'm just taking a kind of a test run here, see how things are going to fit and work out. And this is the idea I had. So now I can strap the new rack to the old rack. Now, if you can imagine, uh, for these straps, I'm probably going to go eight of them, just because that's I kind of like overkill on that kind of stuff. It's not any more work to put uh, more straps. Better safe than sorry. So just like that. So that's just two straps on one side, not even the other side's not even on. And here's the other idea I had of maybe going crossways. So now I'm actually securing two two by fours on one end onto the crossbar and the lateral bar all at the same time. So if you imagine one strap like that on each corner plus two more in the center, this rack ain't going nowhere. Okay, now that I'm happy with uh, the fit, now it's to uh, work on the finish. So a bit of a stretch up there again. That's, that's just by the way, that's not a a short guy problem that's a five and a half inch lift on 33 inch rubber so uh, no short jokes allowed here here I broke out the router I'm using a quarter inch round over bit and I'm gonna go over every uh, protruding end I find that uh, it's not so much for aesthetics, it actually helps prevent splintering on the end of your 2x4s. Uh, and for the 3-4 minutes that it took to go around and do uh, every end piece, it's uh, definitely worth it in, in my opinion. Now for a little splash of paint. Again, some leftover paint from previous projects. I'm using some black trim clad. Of course, I'm going to go black. The truck is uh, full of black accent. 
and uh, the trim clad rust paint uh, I like it it works really well uh, I've yet to have a piece of wood rust on me using this paint so I really uh, believe in the trim clad and making sure I soak the end really really good and I really hate painting so I'm going to lay it on pretty thick just because I don't want to do a second coat so I'd rather lay it on an extra thick and let it sit longer to cure than to have to break out that can of paint a second time and do it all over again. And here's the finished product all painted up. And for the remainder uh, of the video, the next four hours, you get the joy of watching paint dry. Just think of it as uh, like that burning log at Christmas time that you can tune into that TV channel, you know, kind of like that. Okay, enough playing around. This is day three. So my rack has cured, it's dry. And now, let's see how it fits. It should fit just the same, but should look different so here I'm got it going on the wrong way so I give it a spin so I was I kind of messed that up but I'm kind of a smooth operator so I made it look like I knew what I was doing there and boom look at that falls right into place locks right into where it's supposed to be Here I'm reinstalling my straps because this is day three and this is the moment of truth. I'm going to be stacking canoes on here so let's secure it down and we're going to give it a test. And I'm not going to go crazy with the straps because I'm not actually going to drive down the road and I'm just going to sit some canoes on there and see how it all uh, settles in and how it looks and how it rides and so on. Okay, canoe number one. I brought my step stool because again, it's not a short thing, it's a jacked up truck. And it, oh boy, she's a heavy one. Oh, and now I'm trying to put it on and I realize I better go up one more step on my step stool. And this thing is heavy, it's like 70 pounds plus. So I just about shit myself right there. It's a behemoth of a canoe. It's not overly long, but it's really wide and really heavy. And there it is. Sitting pretty good. And I do have to be careful. I got an injured knee, so it's, it's dicey for me to do this. Okay, so I'm happy with the, the first one. So let's, uh, let's bring out the Maserati. Let's see how it fits on there. And clearly, this is how I always load this canoe. And there, my friends, is the difference between an old school fiberglass canoe and uh, today's technology of carbon fiber and carbon Kevlar and all these funky materials. And there we have it. Two canoes sitting on that truck. That's my initial look. I'm walking around and it looks pretty good. Momentarily, I'll grab the camera and I'll give you guys a 360 view of how this is turning out to be like. Now, I'm not going to bother uh, strapping the canoes down. Like I said, I'm not going to go down the road. I just want to see how it sits and there's how much room there is to run straps around these members. You see here momentarily. You know the old saying is uh, blue and green should not be seen but quite honestly I don't think there's an issue with it. There you have it. Looks pretty good. 
plenty of, uh, I, I think I did the right thing by going six and a half feet on my crossers. I really, really do think uh, I nailed it with that measurement because I can clearly put two large canoes on here and still have enough material overhanging the end so that you can wrap a strap around it. I'm happy with the outcome. have it a double canoe rack homemade I like it it's gonna work thanks for coming out see you on the next one everybody